Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be an overview for those of you who's going to second year. So if that sounds interesting, let's get right to it. First up, your winter semester is going to be about genetics. So you should be used to it from first year. It's going to be about the main three tests that you're going to have throughout winter. The first two are going to be online tests that you should be used to. Again, for these, you just do some of the past papers as well as study or go through your protocols. And I think you should be fine for most of them. The last one, however, is going to be a written exam. For that test, you're going to have to make sure you're pretty thorough with all your protocols from first till like second year as well as go through like whatever resources of the past papers that are available because they're going to be a tremendous help for you to get through that exam. These three exams would be there spaced out through the winter semester. I think the first one is going to be around maybe the fifth or sixth week and the second exam is going to be like uh, three weeks later and the final or third class test as such is going to be like January I think second week. So with that you should be done with the preliminary stuff for genetics and then your final exam is going to be there in the winter. Quite a lot of people prefer to preterm it to get it out of the way. Honestly, it's quite a simple exam. Just make sure you study thoroughly for the written part because I feel like the written part is quite alright. Like it's very possible if you can just sit and study it. So for that, again, go through the past papers, whatever is available and make sure you're really thorough with your concept. So at the end of the winter semester, you're going to have your genetics final, which the first part is going to be the written exam, which is around 15 questions with like some stuff related to like whatever topics you've done through, like first and second years. So that's how it's going to be. And once you're done with that, once you pass it, you go to the oral round. Now um, to get an A in genetics, you need to get like at least a 13 out of 15, I think and anything below that can be a B or a C. So if you're looking to get that one or an A, make sure your written part goes really well. Um, try and aim for a full so that at least you get within that margin, like the 13 to 15 range. So yeah. And after that, you go into the oral part. Again, for this, I think there should be like a wiki script available for all the questions that you need, or you can look at senior notes. And I think that should be more than enough for you to get through the exam. So genetics, quite fine. And apart from genetics, in the winter, you're going to have class tests alone, no finals for the subjects of physiology and biochemistry. So these are going to be the two big juggernauts of this year. In the summer, that's where you're going to have your finals. Now, I'm talking about biochemistry first. Now, this subject varies depending on which department you have. For me, like I had a different department as opposed to my juniors who had the oncology and genetics department, whereas mine was different departments. Like my department was located in the Dean's building. So I had a different system altogether as opposed to them. I had weekly tests, which helped me uh, push towards focusing more on biochemistry, more than physiology. I had class tests every week, and I had like a block test, which happened uh, once every one and a half months. So this covered like huge chunks of the portions that were needed for the finals. So. I was quite prepared for biochemistry by the end of summer and it depends again like if you like the subject, if you don't like the subject. So for biochemistry, I would rather just focus on how the finals are going to be. Finals happen in the summer. For this, you have two parts. We usually write the written first on one day and on the next day or two days later, you can usually give the oral if you pass it. The pass percentage is I think 50%. I'm not sure if that's changed since the time I had biochemistry. Biochemistry, what happens is you got to make sure that you're very thorough with the oral part because for the written part specifically, I didn't particularly go through any past papers or anything as such, but rather I use this book called Lippin Cots. It was really beneficial and like I quite liked it. It was really good in my opinion. So I would definitely recommend you guys, if you want to read a book, go through Lippin Cots for biochemistry. Apart from that, if you use these videos by Ninja Nerds, it's so good. Trust me, you're going to need it for both biochemistry and physiology. And by the end of it, I felt like I was quite prepared with biochemistry. The exam was quite fine. Just make sure your oral part is really thorough. And after you're done with the written part, for the oral round, what happens is you usually get to choose your quadruplet. So the first part is going to be from general biochemistry. So that's going to consist of stuff that you could have done earlier in high school, as well as like some of the stuff that was initially covered in biochemistry. Then after that, the second part or second section would cover metabolism. So metabolism is very important. Like I cannot stress how important it is. Like it's important for all three parts or all four parts, actually, I feel. And 
For metabolism, what I did was again, I went through lip and cords first, and then like I went through Ninja Nerd. These two were like really useful. Things like it covered quite a big portion of the third section, which is about organs. So with the organ part, again, they focus more on like the metabolism as well as like a few extra details. So I feel like if you're really good with your metabolism, it also covers stuff in your organs part of the biochemistry third part. So just make sure you're thorough with all three of these parts. And the fourth part should be the genetics part of biochemistry. Now this, if you're really, like you just finished genetics in the winter semester, so it should still be quite fresh in your head, but like just go through it like maybe once or twice and you should be good. So that's how biochemistry goes. And you're gonna have the lab practicals, like you're gonna do some experiment in the lab like every week throughout the winter and summer. That's gonna make sure your base in biochemistry is gonna be strong. Because like before you go for the finals, usually there's like supposed to be, I don't know if it's there for the other department, but for my department, there was um, this thing where like you had to pass the lab part first. So for the lab part, what happened was like during, before your classes started, we had like a preliminary class test. So we had to get like an average of above, I think 50 or 60% overall and all the tests were combined. So that was one requirement. The second requirement was uh, you had to pass the lab test at the end of the summer semester. Throughout the two semesters, you would have done enough experiments. So you'll be given one experiment at random and you got to do it. And like based on your readings, as well as your conclusion and findings, you will be given uh, like you'll be allowed to pass the test or no and after you're done with that you should have like an oral for your lab part and this lab part is also very important for your internal organs uh, your organs part of biochemistry so I would definitely recommend you to be very thorough with these parts and after you're done with these three things which is getting the 50 to 60 percent average in um, the biochem test class test combined and then the lab test and then the oral part for the lab, then you get to go for the final exam. For me, the thing is biochemistry, like I did it end of May, um, cause I just wanted to like preterm it and get as much time as possible for physiology. So after you're done with the preliminary test, you just go do the finals, which I discussed before, which consists of the written part as well as the oral part. Now, next up is physiology. The subject is again, um, it's considered to be like the equivalent of anatomy because it's quite extensive. Um, I feel like it's actually both these subjects like biochemistry and physiology, both of them were equally extensive. Thing about physiology was you had to like pass the block test that you have. So, okay, what is the pattern for physiology? For physiology in the winter, you're gonna have three block tests. So whatever you do in one month's time usually comes for the first block test. For the second one, again, what do you cover in that month? And for the third one, the same thing. You're allowed to fail three tests here. If you fail more than three tests, then you would have to give the physiology credit test. If you fail it in the winter, you can give it either in the winter or the summer. But if you fail it in the summer, you have to give it, you can only give it in the summer. So yeah, again, in the summer, you're going to have three block tests. And usually these block tests, the first two parts would be like covering the chapters that you've already done. And the third part would be based on some simulation. So simulation is wherein you go to this lab like setting and then it simulates physiological and not physiological conditions. It tries to focus on physiology and what could be not physiological in like a body. So like you're trying to find some anomaly. So that's how it goes. And for your finals, you just go over the senior notes. Uh, you're going to have like, first is going to be the written part, which is going to be like an MCQ. So for this, I would recommend you to make sure your oral part is really thorough of and make sure you go over like whatever notes and past papers that are available. And for the second part is ECG. For this on the website, there should be practice tests that you can do and watch some online YouTube videos for like how to look at ECG and that should be fine. And your third part is going to be about a lab practical so during some of the physiology classes you also get to discuss lab questions like for example like taking blood pressure or like the osmolality of urine etc etc so there's the third part is going to be about that that's going to be in the oral round and the last one the fourth section would be about your final oral exam so what happens is once you're done with the first two parts which was the written and ecg part you give you get this quadruplet with like the lab part and your final triplet question. So once you're done with the lab part, usually you go to the round with the oral examination, which has the triplets. One is usually gonna come from blood or respiratory. The other one usually comes from neurology or like 
something related to um, the musculoskeletal system. And the third one could either be digestive or um, urinary system or something like that. So for this, I recommend you to go again over the Ninja Nerd videos. Apart from this, for the books, you can use BRS, which is like a, it's like a really concise book for most of the stuff that you need to know. It's basically a concise version of Costanzo. So I didn't personally read Costanzo, but like I went through some of the topics in BRS because it seems very nice and concise and I quite liked it. Apart from this, people like to use Guyton. It's a very massive book. To be honest, uh, I just gave up on trying to read it. Like the first like one, one and a half weeks I tried reading it. Like I just prefer to like watch videos for it. So for the videos part, I use Ninja Nerd. So yeah, that's all I feel like you gotta know for physiology, biochemistry and genetics. And between your physiology and biochemistry, you could give the other exam, which is like a minor exam in the summer semester which is going to be immunology for this you can just i feel like this is document which has all the information you need for immunology and i think that should be fine so that's it uh, for the video today if you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe i've seen some of the comments yes uh, i definitely understand that some of you guys want to know how the accommodations are going to be here the dorms as opposed to living in an apartment sure i'll try coming up with it soon that's it for me today see you guys next time